Kevin Raposo here with speedyphotographer.com and in this video I'm going to share six different programs that you should be using if you're a photographer. Parts of this list will also be helpful if you shoot video or if you're just a content creator in general. Now if you just want a list of recommendations and you don't care about the what, why, or anything that I have to say, well all the concepts and times are up on screen. So the first program that I recommend giving a shot is called Topaz Gigapixel AI. This is a photo enlargement software that can simultaneously improve the quality of your shots while double doubling or quadrupling them in size. This is brand new technology which uses intelligent AI processing to preserve and add detail where none seems to exist. I've personally witnessed this software work some serious miracles. For example, I had a family member send over this picture of the Roman Colosseum, which was taken at a whopping 640 by 360 pixels, and they asked me if I could improve it for printing. Now Photoshop wasn't really helping in this case, so I threw it into Gigapixel AI, quadrupled the size, and then I just sat there in shock. I honestly couldn't believe how good the final product was. It was a perfectly printable image at 2560 by 1440. And it became even more impressive when I compared it side by side with my attempt to enlarge it using just Photoshop. Warning though, there are a couple of things to keep in mind before you get too excited here. Number one, the AI processing algorithms in Gigapixel AI work by using existing pictures to help determine what your enlargement should look like. And because thousands of people have already taken pictures of the Roman Colosseum, I would assume that the program is using all of that information to improve the quality. You might not have as much luck with something that's more obscure or less specific. And number two, this is not something that you want to try doing on a 10 year old laptop. Gigapixel AI demands serious processing power from your computer, so be prepared to wait a couple of minutes if you're using a weaker machine. By the way, this program is part of a larger suite of software called the Topaz AI Utility Bundle, which includes Sharpen AI, JPEG to RAW AI, and Denoise AI. I've tested all of these myself and they work extremely well for what each of them do, but I wanted to focus on Gigapixel AI because it was the one that impressed me the most. And remember that all of the warnings I just mentioned apply to those programs too. The second program that you absolutely need to be using, especially if you're a photographer in any kind of professional capacity, is Photo Mechanic. Photo Mechanic is an ingest and culling software that allows you to import and review high volumes of images and then select the ones that you actually want to edit. Now the first thing that many of you will be thinking is, why would I ever bother with a program like that when I can just use Lightroom or whatever? whatever editing software I happen to have. And there are a couple of reasons. Reason number one, Photo Mechanic is fast. This program can instantaneously load image previews even on weak computer hardware, and that is not an exaggeration. And there's a simple explanation for this. Every time you load up a picture in your editing software like Lightroom, the software has to work from the original high quality image to generate previews and process any changes that you might apply. This significantly slows down the review process, especially if you like to use presets when you first import. Photo Mechanic gets around this by using the JPEG previews that are embedded into your RAW files. These are compressed, low quality versions of the final product, but when your goal is to figure out what you actually want to edit in the first place, then having the highest possible quality doesn't really matter. I can always deal with the high quality versions once I've narrowed it down from 2000 to 25 and thrown it into Lightroom. And by the way, those numbers are not an exaggeration. As a sports photographer, I regularly fire off thousands of images at a time, and I'm expected to deliver only my best work. I would guess that about 2% of my pictures actually make the final cut, which sounds like a terrible ratio and doesn't reflect well on me until you remember that shooting action basically involves taking a look at over 5,000 pictures that are out of focus to find the one that is in focus. Now, if I tried to pull this off without the speed of photo mechanic, I would probably never be hired again. But with that program, you can see exactly how quick I can blast through things when I use it. Reason number two, photo mechanic is optimized for everything that doesn't have to do with editing, like adding IPTC metadata, proper file naming conventions, uploading to an FTP server, and so on. For example, when I copy my pictures off my memory card and onto my computer, I can and set variables that will automatically fill in the date, the location, the keywords, and all that other stuff that gets embedded into your image file. This saves me a ton of time, meets the submission requirements that most photo agencies would expect, and it keeps me organized. And by the way, if that sounds really boring and unimportant to you, well, taking the time to add metadata can help you to land on the first page of Google search results like I have. And I break down all 10 strategies I used to pull this off inside my course, but adding IPTC metadata was definitely one of them. Moving on to the third program that you need 
need, which is called GoodSync. GoodSync is a file synchronization and backup software that is single-handedly the reason why I have never lost a single picture or video file in my career. It works by allowing you to create jobs that automatically trigger at any time you want. So you choose directory A, then directory B, and you select if you wanna go from A to B, B to A, or you wanna synchronize them so that the most recent files are being preserved. Let me give you a couple of examples. Let's say you have an external hard drive and you wanna use it to back up your pictures, but like many of us, you can never remember to actually do it on a consistent basis. So just set up GoodSync to do it for you. Whenever it detects that a new file has been copied to your machine, GoodSync can automatically take that file and move it over to the hard drive for you. Or let's say you have a desktop and a laptop. You're going on the road and you need to take a bunch of project files with you. But when you get back, you have no idea what you actually changed, moved, or deleted because you've been actively working on it the entire time. GoodSync can take care of that for you. Using the file metadata and the date modification information, it can easily detect what you've removed, added, or deleted, then copy all of that straight back to your desktop so you can pick up where you left off. Now, there aren't usually a lot of changes to the files that I use in my photography projects, but when it comes to video editing, this is a massive game changer. I never have to worry about keeping the most recent version of my project or any of my files because GoodSync can take care of it for me. And inside my course, I walk you through basically every single job that I have set up inside GoodSync, how frequently I have them running, which ones I have running. I use this program to the fullest extent and my students even have access to grab a discounted copy. So we're about halfway through this video. If you found any of the first three programs helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you get notified the next time I post a tutorial. So the fourth program that you wanna be using is actually an online software called Buffer or Hootsuite. Buffer and Hootsuite are both online platforms that allow you to schedule out and automatically post your content for Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So if you're working nine to five like many photographers do these days, but you still wanna be putting out your best work online during those hours, you can be using one of these programs. Now, Instagram is notorious for trying to get people to use the app instead of any kind of third-party software like this, but as of February 2021, when I made this video, both Hootsuite and Buffer are capable of automatically posting directly to Instagram if you have a business account enabled. If you just have a personal account, you'll need to install Hootsuite or Buffer on your phone. And when the time comes to post, you'll get a notification that prompts you and copies your caption to the clipboard. Now, I mentioned both of these platforms, but after a lot of testing over the last few years, I personally prefer Buffer for one reason. It allows you to schedule carousel posts on Instagram, which Hootsuite does not. Just to be clear, when you schedule a carousel, you still have to go through the notification process on your phone. But having that option is a massive benefit over Hootsuite, especially if you're a photographer. Now, there are quite a few other differences between these two programs, and I'm not gonna get into detail about them in this video. Buffer is more of a content publishing platform, while Hootsuite is more of a social media management platform. But if you're a photographer just concerned with putting stuff out there and not too worried about the analytics and the interaction side of things, then Buffer should get the job done for you. Next up, the fifth program that you wanna be using is called JPEG Mini. JPEG Mini is a photo optimization technology that can massively decrease the size of your JPEG files while still preserving all of the original quality. It achieves this by using a special form of compression that focuses specifically on reducing the JPEG artifacts that people like you and I would notice. It includes plugins for Lightroom, Photoshop, and Capture One, and on top of all that, it still uses the native JPEG file format, so there's no incompatibility issues. Now, you're probably thinking, when would I ever use this and why isn't the default JPEG compression enough? Well, ask yourself two things. Does your website take forever to load because you don't want to compress your high quality pictures? Or do you have to buy bigger flash drives to deliver your work to your clients? Those are two situations that I've personally dealt with by using JPEG Mini. It doesn't always make a huge difference to the size of your file, but every single byte counts. The sixth and final program that you want to be using is called the Permanent Clipboard Extension for Google Chrome. This extension allows you to save some of the most common stuff that you copy and paste to a pre-saved list. So for example, if you have a set of hashtags that you consistently apply to your social media content, but you're sick of having to scroll through your own feed to find them because you can't remember what they are, well, Permanent Clipboard comes to the rescue. Or if you write very similar email messages on a regular basis, like when you're delivering pictures to your clients, you can just copy and paste the text into an email. Or let's say you run advertisements for your photography business and you have a consistent list of regions that you target, well, you can just copy and paste them into the targeting section of your ad campaign. This very simple extension saves me a ton of time and unlike everything else I've mentioned in this video, it's free. If you wanna learn more about my complete editing workflow from beginning to end and how I actually use these programs when I'm shooting, I'm gonna throw a card up on screen. You can check out that video on my YouTube channel. If this sparks your interest in photography and you wanna learn more about everything from the basics to the business, head over to speedyphotographer.com. This is my online photography school teaching you everything from how your camera works to how you can grow your business using these programs and many 
more. That brings us to the end of another tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell, and I'll see you in the next video.